Inga, uh, thank you for this opportunity to interview you a second time. There was a few questions from teachers after they watched the first interview. And now I know that you went out to Melbourne Airport yesterday and had a look at the project. Is there something you could share uh, about that trip? Sure, and I'm uh, happy to talk to you again. So yesterday I went out to do a site inspection to look at some of the work that had been completed, refinishing one of the taxiways at Melbourne Airport, an important taxiway for serving the East West Runway. They had done a large area of new asphalt paving, uh, like we see on the roads around the city mostly. And I was looking at how good the joints were, how good the surface finish was, how level it was. So about two and a half hours of walking around uh, this area of paving to see how good a job they'd done, where they might need to touch up things to make sure that it lasts a long time like it should. Because for aircraft, especially you think the jet aircraft with their engines hanging down low, they're like great big vacuum cleaners. And the last thing you want is rocks coming out of the pavement and sucking into those engines and getting chopped up into the blades uh, can cause uh, big damage is called FOD, foreign object damage, and very, very important at airports that we avoid that. Okay, now this is not one of the questions I have to ask you, but it's certainly a question from what you've just said about. Um, explain to me, I don't know if you did in the first interview, I don't think so, about East West Runway. Explain the directions and the names. So, Melbourne, yep, Melbourne Airport has two runways. Uh, one, uh, it's long main one that is north-south. So um, it's one big bit of pavement that runs almost exactly north-south. Um, and then they have a second runway that crosses that one running from the east to the west or the west to the east, depending which way you approach it or take off on it from. Airports have runways in different directions, uh, especially in the past because the aircraft should land and take off facing into the wind. Uh, so sort of like the first lesson of sighting runways is where's your winds from most of the time. Okay, let's start on these questions that I've been given. Uh, how, how do you know how long a runway needs to be and what are the lengths nowadays of runways? So there's a lot of things that get considered in how long a runway should be. Uh, it, what type of aircraft do you expect to use from them? An international airport like Melbourne, it will look at all the biggest aircraft. A lot of the newer aircraft can take off on shorter distances. So you think of the great big A380, it actually doesn't need as much length of runway as the older 747 did, which is a little bit smaller, but didn't have the technology in the wings and the high lift devices. So it needed more runway length. Uh, so you look at what type of aircraft you're going to be using on the runway, how far they want to travel. Again, Melbourne International Airport, they fly all the way to America. May, we have Air Canada flying from here all the way up to Canada, to the Middle East. Uh, and Qantas is looking at planes that will fly from here to New York or London without stopping. So they're going to be really heavy, full of fuel. And so they'll, they'll want as much runway as they can get. Uh, there's a saying with pilots, the only runway that's useful is the runway in front of you, not what's behind you. So they like it the longer the better. But there's always, you've only got so much land, it costs money to make them, it costs money to keep them. So you also look at how high it is above sea level. So the lower you are closer to sea level, the denser their air, giving more lift. So when you start getting runways built higher up, they need to be longer. And how hot the temperatures are, are. if you get lots of hot temperatures, again, when the air gets hot, it gets thinner, giving less lift to the wing. So you need more length of runway again. So, so lots of factors. And the, air, the uh, Boeing and Airbus and the manufacturers of the planes publish tables uh, showing for this weight on the plane, in this temperature, this wind, this is how much runway you need. Okay, thank you. Uh, is the surface of a runway the same as the surface that we drive on with our cars? With our cars? It, it can be, yes. Run runways can be, they can be everything from unsealed, so a gravel strip, 
Uh, we see a lot of those out in country Australia. Uh, you won't see your big jet aircraft on those, but um, you, you could see the military cargo lifters. They'll, they'll operate there and the Hercules, the uh, big turboprop aircraft, and they make massive clouds of dust when they do that. But, uh, and then a lot of our regional airports will have a spray seal type pavement. So that's what we see out in all our country highways. Uh, airport like Melbourne is a mix of asphalt, so our good roads around Melbourne, and concrete. So yes, you see all the same types of finishes as you see out on the roads, just finished to a higher standard usually, and maintained to a higher standard, because you don't want those rocks coming out. Okay, and can you explain the um, thickness um, or yeah, thickness of the runway and how that maybe compares to what we see on a normal road and um, so that it can sustain that weight of those aircrafts? Sure, so a, a runway, it depends on the type of land that you're building on, so what types of soils are there. Melbourne Airport is built on what's called these uh, basaltic volcanic uh, clays. So when, when it's dry, uh, it's very hard, but uh, you have to design for the worst situation. So for winter, when it all gets soaked and wet, and then it's not very strong at all. So there's a lot of thickness of pavement that we build. So we build, we dig out uh, a lot of the soil, uh, make sure that we've got a good, we call it, you call the subgrade is what's already there. Uh, make sure that's all finished off smoothly and well. And then we build up many layers of different types of materials, uh, a good mix of um, aggregates, gravel in, in a nicely graded, so it all fits together nicely in better and better layers, stronger and stronger layers. So it can be up to like 1.2 meters <laughs> uh, deep to carry the weight of the aircraft. And again, your great big A380 doesn't have the heaviest uh, impact on the pavement because it's got so many wheels and tyres on it that they spread the weight well, whereas some of the other aircraft uh, only have a few and they're really hard on the pavement. Okay, um, and continuing on with the runway um, conversation, what is the lifespan of a runway or and what do you have to do how often do you have to maintain or checks like you were doing yesterday what needs to be done sure so the lifespan i guess you you build the runway like at a major airport like melbourne you'd build the runway really to last forever but like anything it needs maintenance it needs refinishing you don't have to rebuild the whole runway usually so there's two, two areas you look at for uh, lifespan. There's the structural life, say so how well does it keep carrying the, all the aircraft that it's meant to carry or you hope that it will carry. And then how well does the, uh, just from the sun and the wind and the rain and the water and the jet blast, how well does the surface hold up? So the environmental damage. The structural, usually designed for uh, asphalt type pavements for 20 years or so until you need to uh, refinish and resurface it. Uh, concrete pavements, you plan for 40 years. So Melbourne was built in the late 60s and I think opened 1970. Uh, the concrete is now starting, to, well, has been failing. It's what are we, 50 years old now? So they've been doing a program of replacing the concrete part of it. The asphalt, it, the environmental failure is actually the bigger problem. Uh, and every 10 to 15 years, you do a new layer of asphalt on the surface of the runway or the taxiways. So you, you take off maybe 30 millimetres of the existing surface, you just mill that off and then you put a layer of say 50 millimeters on top and that that gives you a nice new surface and strengthens it a little bit okay and what do you do with cracks form in the runway earlier than those um scheduled um maintenance times or yeah sure form? so yeah what what i was just talking about was the maintenance uh, the major maintenance at the end of the life through through the period you, with asphalt, I guess you'd hope for about five years or so where you wouldn't really need to do anything. 
But then you're right, crack, cracks might start appearing at the joints, depending how well it was done when you layer, because you don't do the whole width of the runway in one run of paving, you do a whole pile of lines of paving and you have joints in between. So after five years, some cracks might start appearing and you, there's, uh, there's special products that you can apply over the top. Uh, so you have maintenance of that type where you seal those cracks because the problem is if water gets into the pavement, it starts breaking up the whole pavement. And again, you get that FOD coming up and being a risk and it breaks up. You might see that on roads uh, where, it, where it's been really rainy, you have wet areas and the pay, you start getting potholes. So we're trying to really trying to avoid that at all, all costs. So there's crack sealing. You might, at the worst, you might actually get a bit that's breaking up and you'll have to do a patch. So you'll cut out an area and uh, patch it. You hope you don't have to do that often. Uh, and you don't usually. So cracks, patches. Uh, you have to do the line marking. A busy airport like Melbourne, not at the moment, but uh, not in normal times, they paint the centre line, the white line down the centre of the runway every week because of all the aircraft landing on it and wearing it and covering it in rubber. Oh, and the other piece of maintenance is you know, how when aircraft land, you get that puff of smoke when the tyres touch and they basically do it. That's because the tyres are spinning up as they touch the pavement and uh, they leave streaks of rubber there. So you can imagine the hundreds and thousands of aircraft that are touching down and doing that, all that rubber builds up. So uh, regularly you have to go and remove all that excess rubber uh, so that the drainage, you don't just build up a great big pile of rubber and you need to main, it means the runway doesn't drain water so well either, which is important because you don't want the aircraft skidding. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, how often uh, do you go out to the airport uh, to see the work that's going on? Uh, it depends what I'm doing, what project I'm doing. For example, back in Abbott, uh, when we were living in the UAE, I was... I was responsible for construction of a new runway at Abu Dhabi airport and some aprons there and taxiways and fire stations and all types of parts there. Then I was going uh, pretty much every day. So I had a role where I was there every day watching the construction, managing the construction. Or if I'm more of a project manager role like I am at the moment with Melbourne, I just go very occasionally. It's more about meetings and talking about solutions. Okay. And uh, with these big projects that you've worked on around all over the place, um, what other engineers do you work with? So electrical or mechanical? Who, mm -hmm. yeah, who do you work with? Yeah, it, it can be all types uh, depending on the project. But look, okay, so big projects like new runways, uh, you obviously have your pavement engineers, you'll have, there are some buildings you always have to build because you have to build buildings to put all the airfield lighting uh, equipment. They call the, in Australia, we call them airfield lighting equipment rooms, ALERs, where all the transformers and generators for backup power and everything are housed. So you usually have some buildings, you'll have fire stations, substations for the electrical supply. So you have, uh, you might work with architects, structural engineers, mechanical, the heating, ventilation, cooling type engineers. You'll have drainage engineers, because you've got to make sure that all the drainage works um, and we don't flood runways or taxiways. I've already said the pavements, earthworks, uh, contamination. Uh, often they're like around a lot of the world. Uh, the foam that the airport firefighters used to spray everywhere uh, has materials called PFAS in them, which has unfortunately contaminated a lot of land. So we need to look at how that's treated and taken out. Uh, what other, all, pretty much airports can have every type of engineer you can think of. Yes, the lighting and the electrical. Yep, lots of electrical. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much for your time and sharing this insight on pavements and uh, airport uh, projects. Sure, it's good fun to share.
It's good fun work too. See ya. Bye.